Sabadi crap to all my fellow carpenters out there. Creative Thoughts series, Raisin River Cast, Kitchen Table, episode 7. I'm building a kitchen table and in today's video I'm crafting the table legs. I really hope that you are enjoying my videos. I try to do my best, believe me. And if you have any criticism to make, please comment down below. I will uh, reply shortly after. Critiques are always welcome, cause I can grow up and learn. Indeed, if you think I deserve, of course, thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell for future videos notification. And now, without any further ado, let's to build some and let's to have fun with! Uh, Ok guys, in this Creative Thoughts series I'm building an Epoxy River Cast kitchen table and in today's video I'm crafting and welding the table legs. If uh, you are interested in how I ended up to this point, above my head web link to this series playlist. I begin the project by measuring and cutting all the legs required parts. The legs uh, should be 78 cm long and I build them with 7 x 4 cm rectangular shape profiles 2 mm thick. The main frame that is going to support the legs is built with 5 x 3 cm rectangular shape profiles 1.8 mm thick with a length of 135 cm and a width of 75 cm. The legs are cut and done and I proceed now with the table main frame, obviously a rectangular shape with the 90 degrees corners, so I go with the 45 degrees cuts. My steel profiles are made by mild steel hot rolled process. Indeed, I'm dealing with a very dirty steel that doesn't go well at all with the kind of welding process that I'm working with. TIG weld. As you know, TIG weld hates dirty steel. So, I clean my table parts with a nylon disc first to remove grays, rust, the main dirty layer. I go then through with uh, my grinder and uh, a 80 grid sand disc. And uh, finally I complete the cleaning process with a towel and acetone. Now that all the steel table parts are cleaned, I set the table main frame in place with magnets and uh, I'm uh, ready to weld. Before to do that I have to deal with my electrodes. I sharpen my electrodes with an electric drill and a dedicated bench grinder armed with stones that I use only to do 
Pig Electro. The reason to use a grinder stone only to sharpen TIG electrode is to avoid possible tungsten contamination. And here I am, ready to weld, and I'm working with a WP-17 torch armed with 2.4mm toriated red color electrode, stabby gas lens, and an argon flow of 7 liter per minute. Consider it that I do weld outside my laboratory. I'm welding with the mild steel rods ER70S6 with a diameter of 2 to 3 mm. My welding current between 40 to 60 ampere. My welding is producing sparks and that is not correct at all. May the steel is not enough clean or may the ergon flow is too high? Let's to find out. I don't see sparks anymore and I turn down my argon flow to 5 liter per minute. My steel profiles are really clean, at least on their outer side. Inside, obviously, I can't reach there. They are not clean at all, they are very greasy, dirty. However, the sparks problem seems solved. The table mainframe is finally assembled. I'm going now to clean the weld beads with my grinder and 100 grid sand disc. Now and then, while uh, welding, I still have sparks. Not a lot as before, however, they are still there, and that's not fine at all. The only problem that I can think of is graziness, dirtiness. So, after the sanding, I do one more clean pass with acetone. And uh, here I am, ready to assemble table legs. And uh, this is the concept that I have in mind. I'm going uh, to weld uh, table legs with a 45 degrees angle from the inner mainframe 90 degrees corner. Let me see if uh, everything is in order. Leg uh, perpendicular to the table main frame. And it is, okay, spot on. I love work with steel. Keep the table parts, in this case, in the right position is to me really challenging. Steel has its unique personality. It reacts to welding heat by bending, pulling and shrinking. I'm definitely a beginner and I'm still mastering the proper techniques to deal with steel movements. To reinforce the table legs, this is what I have in mind. Add three steel sections around the table leg to provide another weld layer. Mm -hmm. 
as uh, you can see I'm not a welder with much experience I do weld now and then when projects come however I don't weld often and I have a lot of to learn about anyway the learning process no matter what I'm doing is the most rewarding part of the project while I'm welding I have to frame the shot for my YouTube videos and this adds difficulty to the task cause I have to assume positions that normally I don't while welding anyway this is part of the deal in my language Italian we used to say do you want a bicycle and now ride that means accept pro and cons no matter what in past videos web link above my head if you want to check it out I built a case to hold my GoPro camera behind a welding glass to shoot close-up videos while I'm welding see clearly the bead the paddle etc etc the project was a failure so I ordered from eBay uh, different uh, gradation and the glass specific for my GoPro camera once I will receive them I will test and hopefully I will be able to show you guys welding close-up shots in these uh, video shots uh, you see me shaking the torch a lot due to the technique that I'm implementing the so-called walking the cup movements that look exaggerated due to the speed up velocity of the video I'm done with uh, welding the lower parts of the table and I proceed by cleaning the weld beads with a 100 grid rigid sand disc. I turned the table and I end up the assembling process reinforcing the overall structure with a few weld beads in strategic points. Still with a 100 grid disc, I clean the welded areas and I'm done. The table legs are ready for paint. Magic of welding process. I love to sand and clean the welded beads and see that two pieces of steel become one. It's really a rewarding feeling. Last step of the process. Once that I'm done with the weld and sand, I clean the entire structure with the acetone. Time to paint and I use acrylic spray paint flat black color. No, 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 it doesn't work at all. Better to dress a respirator. The proper way to spray paint steel is to apply first a coat of fixer, that product that gives to paint a background grip. With the, the acrylic spray brand that uh, I use, I can do without. I always work with this specific brand and when I spray steel, it behaves really well. It doesn't need any grip coat it sticks on raw steel without any problem. 
My Racing Cast Kitchen Table Legs are done. Job accomplished. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you soon in the next episode.